Howdy, my name is Pastor Josh, a captive of God. Our memory verse for today comes from the book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 7 and it says, When a wicked man dieth, his expectation shall perish, and the hope of the unjust man perisheth. Think about that. Before I begin, I'd like to state two things. Number one, there's only one true God and his name is Jehovah God. Why am I saying this? This is because people have decided that we all worship the same God. But that's not true. There's only one true God and his name is Jehovah God. And how we know he's the true God, it's because he agrees with and endorses Jesus. This renders all other gods useless. What I'm saying is Allah is not Jehovah God. Buddha is not Jehovah God. The God of the Hindu is not Jehovah God. There's only one true God and his name is Jehovah God. Number two, just because you were raised to believe that there's no God, Jehovah God does not exist, does not make him disappear. He will continue to inhabit eternity and regardless of what we believe to be true. I'll jump into today's scripture reading and it comes from the book of John chapter 10 and verse 9. And it says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. This is Jesus in one of his uh, many uh, declarations saying that he is the door. Uh, similar verses can be uh, found in, in other gospels where Jesus declared, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the true vine. And he also says, uh, my father is in me. And my father is also, uh, and I'm also in my father. So he, he here is telling uh, his disciples and people who cared to listen, along as with you and I, that he's the door. He's the door to what? He's the door to salvation. Why do we need salvation? Because of sin. God did not create sin, but we fell into sin after Adam fell into sin. So we need salvation. We need Jesus. And you, you might say you don't believe there's sin. But look at the world we live today and you'll tell me if there's no evil, which is sin. And we need a savior who is Jesus. And you know, um, modern society once again has decided that there are many ways to God. But I'll categorically tell you that there's only one way to Jehovah God. And that's through Jesus Christ. We have to accept him as the Lord and Savior. And this is a declaration that Jesus is deity. He's not a creature like you and I. He's not like Prophet Muhammad, for example. He's not like Buddha, for example. He's not like uh, Hanuman or one of those uh, Hindu gods. He's deity. When his time to come to this earth came, he was begotten by a virgin woman, Mary. He was not created. He was there before the uh, beginning of time. And everything that's created, whether what we see or what we cannot see, was created through him and for him. But he humbled himself and was born of a woman. He came and died for you and me. And with that in mind, he declares this. I am the door. By me, if any man enter him, he shall be saved. So, you need Jesus. I need Jesus. For what? For salvation, to access the Father. He's the one who reconciled us to the Father. Father God cannot tolerate any sin. And rest assured... You cannot save yourself. You cannot stay without sin 100% of the time. We fall by sin of error, sin of ignorance, sin of commission or omission. You cannot please God and you cannot uh, earn salvation. What you can do is submit to the authority of Jesus and say, I accept you died for me. And because of that, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Take control of my life. Forgive my sins. And with that, We'll have access to the Father. And you know, when you have access to the Father, there's nothing that's impossible for you, according to His will. You know, when we have access to the Father, why, why do we need access to the Father, you may ask? We need spiritual and physical resources to survive on this earth, and mostly for eternity. And you know, spiritual resources, why do we need spiritual resources? Because the spiritual realm is more important than the physical realm. What you cannot see will last forever. What you cannot see will pass away very soon. Lives, li lives are short. Our, our lives are very short. 70 years, the Bible says, and 80 or more if you're stronger. And you know, the spiritual resources that we need are to fight the evil ones. You know, in this life, what, what we do not know, and what I'm here to tell you is that if you win in the spiritual, you'll win 
in the physical. And you know, we fight the fight uh, in the spirit. This is detailed in the book of Ephesians 6.12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is Paul writing to the church in Ephesus, reminding them, instead of uh, fighting against each other, politics within each other, gossip, and <clears throat> all these dramas, who is greater than the other, or who has uh, more wealth than the other. He's telling them, remember our war is spiritual. We are fighting against what? Principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In short, the kingdom of Satan and his agents you know so evil exists but it does not begin in the physical it begins in the spiritual whereby the evil one uses his agents to make sure that evil is dominating us us who do not accept jesus christ if you accept jesus christ and you feel with the holy spirit you'll be more than a conqueror in christ jesus you'll not condone sin you'll not entertain sin you'll sin but slowly you'll be conquering habitual sin and the Holy Spirit will convict you of sin and you'll not be able to entertain any sort of sin. But millions and millions of people are in bondage of sin. And how did that bondage begin? In the spirit. We, we are born uh, sinful. We are born selfish. We are born to do our will. And you know, th there's no uh, demilitarized zone. You're either on God's side or the devil's side. Unfortunately, most people are on the devil's side and they do not even realize. You know, they go through... A lot of problems, they have anger issues, they have uh, uh, alcohol issues, drug issues, and many other issues in this life. And they claim it. it's just life, it's normal, but it's not. I'm here to tell you that. It's the spiritual warfare that we need to really think about. And this is what Jesus said in the scripture reading. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. What is this pasture? These are the resources I'm talking about. The pasture is spiritual resources for spiritual warfare and access to physical resources. So, this is the spiritual warfare we need uh, to overcome the evil one. And that is the pasture. And you see, there's a text that sh says, and shall go in and out. What does that mean? You, sh you will be able to enter into the spiritual realm and realize what is going on and fight that through prayer and other resources that the father gives you using that pasture we are the sheep of his pasture and this is declared in the book of uh, Psalm chapter 100 verse 3 and it says know ye that the Lord he is God it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture so this is the psalmist saying that and more so we see him saying that in Psalm 23. He leadeth me beside still waters. He leads me to lie down in green pastures. So when you are with Jesus, you have all the resources you need, spiritual and physical. And I'm, I'm starting with spiritual because it's the most important. And number two, this pasture represents physical resources. Uh, the Lord's Prayer declares that, give us this day our daily bread. We need physical resources to survive. But don't you think God knows? Don't you think he created you and he knew you need food, clothing, shelter, and other things? He, he does. And that's why you need Jesus. He, he is the same Jesus who said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and the rest shall be filled unto you. Seek him first. You get spiritual resources to fight uh, the evil one. And number two, you'll get physical resources. Food, clothing, shelter, and any other thing that you need according to the will of the Father. And don't confuse needs and wants. Two different things. God promises you supply of your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Wants he'll give you as you become more faithful. And not for wealth accumulation and boasting, but to be a blessing to others. So we really need to, be, to, to, to find Jesus so that we can get these pastures. You cannot make it in this life if you do not agree and realize the importance of the spiritual realm. And we know that once we overcome the spiritual uh, warfare, which is never ending until the day we die, but we overcome day after day, day after day, 
physical resources will force or will follow us and you know God the Father he really loves us very much in a way that we will never understand fully maybe until the day we, we see him in heaven and that's what Jesus encouraged our people in Luke 12 32 it says fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom so he's not holding it back making sure you you, you go to hell it's his pleasure to give you the kingdom but you have to accept Jesus there's no two ways about it if you think you're going to uh, be charitable and be nice to people and be polite and that will take you to heaven no he says this is my kingdom and I give the rules on how, how you will enter this kingdom same scenario this is my home how you enter my home there are rules come and ring the bell and then when you come come dressed this way this is uh, my expectation if you are to enter my home so if you come in another way and decide that you enter my home I'll say no one change and then we'll, we'll see so God is saying the same way you have to accept Jesus and Jesus himself says I'm the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture those are the conditions you either follow it or you don't or you start uh, doing politics who Jesus was who is not oh that's not true that's not it's not up to me to convince you if this word has touched you trust me it's the Holy Spirit that's drawing you to God and you know in the same theme of sheep and pasture Jesus declared that my sheep hear my voice so if you hear his voice today do not hesitate you are his sheep and you'll not be lost you'll come to him and he'll save you and you will enter in and out and you'll find pasture you'll not have any issues folks if this message has touched you and you feel you need to discuss further you need to give your life to Jesus contact us uh, on our website and we shall pray for you my God who's mighty who never disappoints will take care of you until next time folks this is Pastor Josh saying Shalom